and mortars all. <laughs> Amid seasonal greetings for joy and peace, I give thanks for the power of love. I'm a divine being, bringing the love of God into the world. Through my words and actions, I am kind and patient, compassionate, empathetic, and encouraging and supportive. As I am blessed by love, I share love's blessings with others. I center myself on the Christ within and go forth as the heart and the hands of love in the world. The reading for today is from John 1, 4, 7. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God.
to come into flame. And then on the second Sunday, we lit the candle of peace. And in peace, we know, we sing it every week, let peace begin with me. Because that's the only place peace can start. We will not see peace in the world until more of us have peace in our hearts and our minds. And then today, we light the candle of love. And we have lit, we're lighting that candle because love is foundational. Love is basically another name for, for God, divine presence, or whatever name that you would like to use. It's love. And so the, the title of today's talk comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 14, that says this, Let all you do be done in love. And I like to, I like to tell stories, and, and I came across this story that I thought was absolutely perfect for today. And this was a number of years ago. And there was a little boy by the name of Matt. And Matt was an orphan. And his, after his mother passed away, he had been raised by his mother. After his mother had passed away, he was sent to live with his aunt. And unfortunately, his aunt wasn't one of those lovey, dovey, cookie-making, everything's great pants. She was more of a, the stern, cool, not quite cold, but she had a habit of reminding little Matt that were it not for her, he would have ended up either homeless or in an orphanage. And those were her encouraging words. <laughs> so, what happened is Lil Matt was in school and he had one of the newer teachers. He was in sixth grade and his brand new teacher's name in the fall was Mr. Grayson. And Matt really liked Mr. Grayson, but he was a very shy little boy. And so he didn't know how to let his teacher know how much he liked him. So he, he after a while, started staying after school. And he, you know, just kind of pick up the papers that were on the floor and throw them in the trash can and, and help straighten up the stacks of paper that Mr. Grayson had on his desk. And he didn't talk much. They didn't talk much. But, but when he did, Manny would tell him about his mom and, and how, how kind and how loving she was and, and how his memories of her really helped him because it was coming up on Christmas time and, and he remembered how she smiled a lot and hugged him a lot and spent time reading to him and listening to him. And so as Christmas drew nearer, Mr. Grayson noticed that Matt wasn't stopping by as often as he was staying after school to help out. So he was getting a little concerned, so we went to him and he, he talked to him and he said, Manny, what, what, what's wrong? I mean, you haven't been coming by. What, are, is something going on? Is everything okay? I miss you. And Matt's eyes got real big and he said, you miss me? Really? He said, yes, I really do. Just before Christmas, 
Daddy came in, and he was carrying with him a little box. And he handed it to Mr. Grayson. And Mr. Grayson looked at him and said, Dad, that's, that's beautiful. You made that? He said, yes, I did. And he said, well, what's in it? And he opened it up. the truth 
of that saying in your being. Because each one of you is an individualized expression of that one presence and power. And that one presence and power is love. Our way show with Jesus told us many times over, love one another. Eric Butterworth, one of my favorite unity writers, explains that Jesus tells us this because love is the completeness of life. When we are in tune with love, we are in the flow of the cosmic process of love. It's not an instant. It is constantly in movement. It is a constant process that we are experiencing. And when we are in the flow of love, we are also in the flow of the, of the divine, the rhythm of love, the feeling of love, the peace of love, the joy of love. All of those are aspects of that one presence and power. And it gives us everything that we need. Love is a noun, it's a verb, it's a feeling, it's a doing. It's verbal, it's nonverbal, it's visible, it's invisible. Love is literally a force of nature. And just as there is no real way to describe that presence and power that many call God, there is no real way to describe love. Because love is God. And God is love. And it doesn't matter what name you give it. It's what you do. Let all you do be done. And if we remember just that one little short message from Corinthians this Christmas season, let all you do be done in love. And it doesn't matter if you're in the middle of my mistake of home, trying to go shopping on a Saturday. <laughs>
that's an opportunity for us to practice doing everything lovingly. So it's not about being in love or being L-O-V-E-D. It's about being love itself. Being love in action. Being love in everything that we do. And just as God is love, God is life. God is, and that is our, our power for this month, the power of life. And, you know, this time of the year, it might seem odd that life is, is the power for the month. Because you look outside and everything's dormant. The trees are all gone, they shed all their leaves and, and the grass, well actually there's still a little green in the grass, but that's a little unusual for December. Usually it's white with snow. But even when you can't see that life, it's still there, right? In the roots of the trees, they're just preparing for spring. The roots of all the, oh, there is so much activity going on in nature that we can't see. And it is that process that is love. Because it is love that makes the flowers bloom in the spring. It is love that brings the trees into greenery in the spring. It's all love. And we experience love, I like to think, a little special this time of year because it often brings people together who don't get to see each other as frequently. Um, we'll be heading up north for a couple of days to spend a little time with Mike's family. And um, Christmas Eve night, we'll be going to my sister and uh, my niece's home. And then Christmas Day, we'll spend it with my daughter and, and, and son and their families. And it's, it's always special. But that time of the year, this time of the year, seems to have a special glow to it, does it not? It's the, I don't see too many people smooching under the mistletoe, but I like the idea. <laughs> <laughs> but the sounds of music, the colored lights, we, we, oh, we went, we went to uh, a little place, I'm highly recommending this place, it's in downtown Boston. It's called Three Cats. And it is a little restaurant um, with entertainment on the weekends. And uh, our own Julie Noe, who performs for us uh, here at Unity East from time to time, was singing. She's actually a protege of, of Tony Canaletti's, and he got her into jazz. And so she was doing Christmas songs and, and jazz and, and the the atmosphere, it is so eclectic that you just you just have to go there. It's right next door to Leon and Lulu's, which is also just a wild and crazy place. But you go to you can go to Leon and Lulu's and, and if you're if you're looking for an, an interesting, different um, Christmas gift, you can go and take a look there. And if you're looking for an evening to have a, a nice dinner with some nice entertainment, try three cats. And Julie Noe, I've already, um, I'm, we're talk, the board is talking about doing some, some uh, fundraisers for 2024, and one of the ones that we're thinking of doing is, since we lost our dear Tony, is having a jazz type concert with Julie Noe and, and her group, and, and of course some of the other things. But anyway, we, we went to the Three Cats, and it was just such a wonderful experience because there were all these groups of people that had gathered together and I don't know if they were if they didn't get together often or not but the the, the spirit was lively and, and happy and laughter and it, it is just you see that this time of year and it's so glorious but it it's and it's love that makes us want to give this time of year. 
It's love that made so many of us at Unity East give to give hats and gloves and boots and scarves to Julie Noe's preschoolers and to Reverend Kelly's adults who have also have needs this time of year. And it's love. I mean, there were, there were so many coats and hats and gloves and things for, for the, those preschoolers. She had to, she's got like a, a, a regular, every week the parents can come in and pick up a couple more things. Because people keep giving and giving and giving. And even the grief we feel after losing someone we care about so deeply simply a different way of love expressing itself. When we lose someone we love, the holidays can be a little less joyous than we remember. And one of the stories in the Sweetest Christmas booklet is written by a Reverend Peggy Conklin. And she tells about how she lost her husband many years, several years earlier. He made his transition. And even though it had been a number of years, she was still just feeling the loss. And it was the night before Christmas, and she was attending Christmas Eve service. And before she left for church, she prayed, and she asked for what she called a Jesus hug. And as it turned out, she sat down next to a young man who she hadn't seen at church before. And at the end of the service, when everyone stood to sing the peace song, he took her hand. And after the song ended, he brushed away a tear, and he reached over, and he gave Reverend Peggy a hug. A real hug. This is how she put it. He reached over and hugged me. A real hug, the kind that is affirming and appreciating, a hug like I often received from my husband. I knew in that moment it was the hug I had asked for. I knew my prayer had been answered. So this time of year, Remember that people need hugs. And it's not, as much as it's the happiest time of the year, it can also be one of the saddest. So let's remember to have everything we do be done in love. Yes, Christmas is for gathering together, it's for friends and family. It's for having fun, it's for having laughter, it's for wonderful gifts. But mostly, Christmas is love. Namaste. So now, let's take some time to go to our heart center. So let's relax for a moment, take a couple of deep breaths, Feel the love that is flowing in, through, and all around you. <clears throat> that love that is in the air and in your heart. And let it flow in and through you to everyone. Let all that you do this Christmas season and beyond be done in love. 
most joyous times this time of the year. Let's think of those. Let's pray for those people. Let's spend time with those people. Let's give from our hearts to those who have so much less and we have so very, very much. Now let us take a few moments and set ourselves in that quiet place of the world and just feel, feel that blending of the love that is filling this room and every heart this day. Divine Spirit, we know that the love that is you, the love that is all things, is with us all the time. It's just sometimes we forget. So help us. Help us to remember love. Help us to remember we are love. Help us to remember to give up and show up in all that we do. And we are so grateful for this knowing, for this love, for this power and presence that fills our minds, our hearts, and our lives with all the love we could possibly hope for. And together we say,
So let's show our love and appreciation for everything that we receive from the east of Clinton Township. And together we say, Divine love, through me, bless us and multiplies all that I am, all that I give, and all that I receive. I live joyfully and easily, for abundance is my source, and abundance is my nature.
and I think Nancy and the choir in the room are doing this. And we have someone who's going to join us and help us sing it. I'm going to call my wife up here. Yes, you are my only wife. <laughs> Like I said, I appreciate you guys doing this. Oh, no, it's not. I know, I know. She had no idea. Close with a prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds.